Welcome back everybody to another video. Tonight we are in the backyard instead of the front yard. But tonight we're gonna take out the smallest rig in my setup. It's the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. And we're gonna put the Rokinon 135 millimeter F2 lens with the ZWO camera. And we're gonna see what type of detail we can get on the North American Nebula from the backyard here in Salt Lake City. Obviously, as you've seen some of my previous videos, I do struggle from Bortle 8 uh, light pollution skies. So that's really heavy in light pollution here in the outskirts of Salt Lake City. So that will definitely affect the clarity of the images, but we're gonna put on a nebula filter. We're gonna put on the Optolong L Enhance filter on the uh, camera lens today. And that's going to help filter out that light pollution that is gonna plague some of the detail. And hopefully it's going to reduce the light pollution, enhance the wavelengths of the oxygen three, hydrogen alpha and hydrogen beta wavelengths, and then also produce a really nice and crisp image for us. Now, previous experience with playing with this, even though the camera lens is capable of F2, you do get some weird aberrations on the stars at F2 with this particular camera and filter setup. So we actually have to stop it down to F2.8, which doesn't seem like a whole lot. And it really isn't for um, light gathering power. Um, most people would kill to shoot at F2.8, you know, natively every day on their setup. So um, it's pretty awesome that we can do that. And uh, we're gonna finish setting up the Skywatcher Star Adventurer here and uh, we'll get rolling. The Star Adventurer is here in the backyard and you can see we've got it uh, pretty much set up so far. We're just missing the uh, counterweight shaft here that would go on the bottom. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach our lens right up here to the top on this quarter 20 thread um, using a 3D printed uh, lens mount, which I'll show you here in just a moment. And then this is our uh, declination drive. We can do any fine adjustments with this. RA is gonna track for us with the single motor inside of this little box here. We do have different mode selectors. We're gonna put it on the star one for tonight, which is really gonna help us out. We're gonna do a polar alignment procedure with the ASI. Since we're gonna have the ZWO camera on here, I'm gonna do the alignment procedure with the ASI. Literally just set it to go and let it track away as the night goes on. And then we can sit here and stack the photos. You know, astrophotography is definitely not the easiest thing in the world, and I've learned a lot of things along the way, and it's uh, I'm no professional by any means, but I enjoy doing it. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy the challenge of trying to make something out of nothing, and when you have really only visibility of magnitude three or four you know, stars from the front yard, it gets kind of depressing, you know, when you go to those really dark skies and you have magnitude six, magnitude seven, you know, visible with your naked eyes. So it's nice to be able to set up a piece of equipment like this and do it all from your backyard or front yard or a nearby park or something that you can really enjoy the, uh, the hobby with. So I'm gonna finish setting up this star adventurer and we'll get rolling here with the North American Nebula. The Star Adventurer is completely set up at this point. We do have two counterweights here off the front since this uh, setup is a little bit heavy. Not in terms of heavy that it's taxing the mount's capacity, but just the fact that even with one of these all the way down, uh, the one counterweight does not counterbalance the setup at all. But uh, it is time to do the polar alignment procedure. We do. Uh, have, like I said, the Rokinon 135 millimeter F2 lens. We've got the ZWO 294, my handy dandy trusty camera. And we have this uh, unique uh, device here from ZWO that takes the ZWO camera, converts it to a Canon lens or a Nikon lens or a Sony lens, depending on which one you wanna use. And included with it is a two inch filter drawer. So I have the uh, light pollution filter in there. You can see it turns everything kind of a blue color instead and uh, that'll be our narrowband imaging filter for the night. We do have the ASI Air on top. That's going to be our main control box to do all of the polar alignment, image capture, and uh, all that good stuff, and uh, to keep a hold of our tracking accuracy for the night. And we're going to do the polar alignment procedure here pretty soon, and then we're going to see how long of uh, subs we can take with this polar alignment. This is a nice 
It's about a 80 millimeter aperture almost, so it's almost a three inch telescope. So it's actually a really good uh, beginner's astrophotographer's lens because it's a nice and wide field. F2 gives you a lot of image capture and uh, or light gathering power and uh, you can get some real good wide shots with it. Now I was saying earlier that we do have to stop it down. You can see here on the back it does say CA2, 2.8, etc. We do have to rotate this knob back to 2.8 though to get proper focus and everything. Focus ring is right here in between the uh, the two uh, cradles here that hold this. This is a 3D printed mount here from Astrodymium. Uh, it's available at OPT and uh, this is great because it fits this lens absolutely perfectly. You just tighten it on, you can mount a dovetail which I've done on the bottom and then it just allows you to take this, attach your camera and the one thing to note about this is you do not counterbalance the declination because you really can't because there is no tracking motor or anything for the deck. You don't really have to counterbalance this so it's not going to be affected. However, it does affect um, your overall guiding if you're trying to guide the fact that you don't have deck guiding on one of these small portable little mounts. They do run off of four AA batteries. You can get up to, I think, 75 hours of tracking on this. So it's really fantastic tracking uh, times on one of these small little Skywatcher mounts. So we've got the Star Adventurer all balanced up. We are tracking on this uh, platform here. We've got it polar aligned. We got it uh, under an arc minute of error, which at 135 millimeters is something you'll never even notice in the uh, tracking unless you're guiding and you know really trying to precision do five or 10 minute subs on this target. This is how far up in the sky the North American Nebula is right now. It's about 8.20 p.m. It transits just before 9 o'clock, so I might just wait and uh, just flip the meridian and then start from fresh once the meridian flip is complete. That way we'll have uh, nice data all the way through. But the first image coming off the ASI Air with only a 30-second exposure is really, really promising with the uh, narrowband filter there. And this little lens does so well and that camera is so sensitive that this is a perfect grab and go astrophotography setup. Or if this is your first astrophotography setup, it's absolutely phenomenal to get wide field nebulae and uh, star clusters and such like that because it's really a capable little device. This is our first sub exposure that we've taken before we do the meridian flip here in about a half hour. But you can definitely see the North American Nebula is right there, fully outlined with the pelican next to it, and a little bit more of nebulosity there uh, down to the bottom right. Now this is just a single exposure. This is not anything overly crazy. You see our tracking, all the stars are nice and round. So it's very promising that we're getting this type of resolution already, just out of 30 seconds. So once we do the meridian flip and give it a go in one to two minutes a piece, this should be screaming with nebulosity.